One Big 12 school says it should be the new power of the Big 12 when the league changes over and welcomes in the four new schools. Not only that, this school thinks it can become the next Clemson to go from consistently good to consistently great. Welcome into the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz. Here on this channel, we talk college football from a Big 12 slant all week. Please consider subscribing if you have not subscribed. I come to you with news of an actual good PR piece written by ESPN for the Big 12. It was Adam Rittenberg, one of their college football reporters, who put this together. And it was all about the optimism with the league, how well the league performed last year on the field, and why there is plenty of optimism that this league can be very viable moving forward. Points out in this article that the Big 12 had Oklahoma State and Baylor record New Year's six bowl wins. The league produced the best bowl record of any Power 5 conference going 5-2. and two. It did miss the college football playoff for a second straight year, but obviously Cincinnati, a member who will be coming into the conference, did make the college football playoff. And Cincy, Houston, BYU, and UCF had a combined record of 44-10, and 10, and three of the four were in the final top 20 of the AP poll. That's a pretty nice resume for the Big 12, all things considered, obviously, for what they did last year. And now we have an article on ESPN.com actually recognizing that. So that is significant in and of itself. But some of the real attention-grabbing quotes from the article to me came out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's all about Oklahoma State. It starts with this, a Mike Gundy quote from after the Fiesta Bowl win over Notre Dame. He said, quote, I understand Notre Dame. I understand their tradition. I understand the helmet and the logo. But we've got a logo, too, Gundy said as the crowd erupted. I did not hear that when it happened. But Mike Gundy is trying to make the point that this has been a great program for a long time, at least a very good program for a long time with what Oklahoma State has done over the last two decades. And, and in fairness, it is somewhat recognizable. I, I would not disagree with him too much there. He goes on, quote, it gave me an opportunity to say we've worked for 18 years on this logo. People from coast to coast now can recognize this logo. I'm not saying we're in Notre Dame's class, but this is a recognizable logo. This game gave us a chance to establish ourselves and vault ourselves into the future, which is a new conference at a pretty high level. Okay. All those quotes, I don't think anybody would look at those quotes with any kind of crazy eye. I mean, Mike Gundy is making the point, again, that they've been a very uh, stable, good program for a long time now. But this is where it starts to change in the article. The article says, quote, when Gundy surveys the future Big 12, he sees Oklahoma State as a potential kingpin. Now, if we're talking about Oklahoma State and kingpin in the new Big 12, now we've just taken this conversation up a notch, right? Because to me, it's always felt like there will be a lot of parity. And if you're going to say, hey, Oklahoma State, we're going to be the kingpin, let's analyze that. Oklahoma State has been ultra consistent. They've been number 10 nationally in wins over the last 15 years. And that sounds about right. Uh, Oklahoma State is a program that has had a pretty high floor throughout that time. Among current Big 12 members who will remain in the league, Oklahoma State has the most wins since 2007 with 138. That's nine ahead of TCU who's next on the list, and they didn't even join the Big 12 until 2012, so they had some easier conference games there for a while. The other side of this, though, is that Oklahoma State has only won the league once in 2011. That's their only conference title since 1976. So to say we're going to be the kingpin of this new league when you have one conference title since 1976, uh, I can understand raising an eyebrow there. And frankly, I would a little bit. This is not meant to be any any slight toward Oklahoma State. I certainly think they have as good a chance as any of anybody of taking over the new league. But I don't think it's fair to say like they are poised right now to be that school for a number of reasons. But here is Gundy continuing on. He said, quote, put all the schools down on paper and look at the success they've had, the wins, the bowl games, all the stuff over 15 years and Oklahoma State should be leading the charge. I'm just going on success, the facts. All right, so now Gundy... Mr. OAN is coming back at us of, hey, I have the facts. Well, there, there's a case to be made here. I mean, look, it's, it's about consistency. Also in a new league, they're not going to have to play Oklahoma, which has been that constant roadblock for them, even in some of their better years that's kept them from having more high-level seasons. But they have recent success to build off of with the 12-win season last year, consistency to build off of, a coach who doesn't seem to be going anywhere. There was a period of time where Gunny was flirting with other jobs. That seems to be kind of passed on. I still think there will be an adjustment period for the new four schools that are coming into the league. So we we opened up a lot of things here to support Mike Gundy's argument, but in the end, it just seems like there will be too many schools that have some teeth to them to say that Oklahoma State should be the team poised. I, Baylor, are we just going to leave Baylor out of this? A, a team that just beat Oklahoma State 
Also nearly made the college football playoff. Also had a 12-win season last year. As Dave Aranda, who is a hotter coaching name right now than Mike Gundy nationally. Uh, there, there's a lot of data su to suggest that Baylor might be that school. In fact, Baylor has won three conference championships in the last nine years. So we've seen more of an ability to hit that high, high level in the Big 12 that included Oklahoma and Texas out of Baylor. So that is just some of the pushback I would give to Gundy here at his point. But he goes on to say, quote, that doesn't mean we start on any higher level. What that means is if we push forward and make a strong commitment, we could get to a high level in the new conference. Says, I don't know if enough people really know the success and the story Oklahoma State football has had. And fair enough, as a K-State fan, I always felt like not enough people knew about K-State's success in the late 90s and early 2000s with Bill Snyder. K-State won 11 games six times in a seven-year span at one point under Bill Snyder in the 90s. I don't think they marketed that well. Gundy wants Oklahoma State to make sure that they do market that well. He says he's embarking on a strategic marketing plan that would highlight the program's long-term success. And there's a little bit of information here about Oklahoma State working some boosters now that T. Boone Pickens passed away, which happened in 2019. And that's smart. Everybody in the Big 12 should be doing this. Try and leverage whatever it is that you have with a new league coming in to really vault yourself forward now that the big, bad Texas and Oklahomas of the world will be out of the league. Understand that. Gummy is smart. None of this is bad. It's all good PR. He got it in this ESPN article, right? It's great PR for Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy, even if we disagree with some of the points slightly. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Gundy looks at Clemson's rise as a model for Oklahoma State. From 2000 to 2014, Clemson had nine top 25 finishes, but only one top 10 and one ACC title. Then Clemson made six consecutive college football playoff appearances and won two national championships. And here's what Gundy said about it. Gundy says, quote, they came up with a marketing plan. They liked Dabo. They started doing all these things to raise money and build facilities. They enhanced their recruiting, had a few good years, pumped a ton of money in it, they established themselves. I would like to take this school, this athletic department, this football program to a level that whenever I'm done and it's somebody else's job, they see Oklahoma State as a dominant football school. You can see the similarities there. I mean, Clemson was definitely a program on a similar level, I would say, to where Oklahoma State is at now before Dabo totally elevated them. I get it. But in today's day and age, the, the talent disparity is so wide between the haves and the have-nots of the college football world. And by the haves, I mean that group of like five to six schools up at the top. That's going to be the hard part here. Gundy would have a hard time convincing me they'll be able to bridge that talent gap somehow, even with the portal, even with NIL, to ever get to that level. But it's an interesting theory, and it doesn't mean, hey, it's like what? You, you aim for the stars, might land in the moon. Uh, go aim for it, and you're probably going to be in a better spot anyway than you were before this if you can do it. So I get it. I understand. I think Gundy is a pretty smart and savvy guy here. And it may sound a little bit brass coming from Oklahoma State, but that is a program that has as much right as anybody in the Big 12 right now to try to lay some claim to this and to try to push themselves forward. Very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's going to be totally off base here. Uh, as always, like the video. Subscribe if you have not to the channel. Talking Big 12 football and athletics here. College football from a Big 12 slant predominantly on this channel. I appreciate all of you guys who do check this out. I will talk to you later.